Welcome back to our video series on the InnoSource contributor role. In this section, we will go into a little bit more detail about the contributor ethos, what it means to be a good contributor and to smooth your contribution path. InnoSource contributors understand that essentially they are guests in the host team's home. Imagine you're visiting your neighbors. You'll likely, even when the door is open, not enter just right on, but knock first. The same is true for inner source projects. Inviting contributions from the outside does not mean that you will immediately receive write rights on the repository. Instead, you will submit change requests as pull requests or well, an other medium, and they are then reviewed by the trusted committers. Much like in the real world, you'll actually follow guidelines set by the host project. And in turn, the members of the home project will mentor you and show you around their house and how to do this contribution. So is this process actually similar for all types of changes? Um, let's look at a specific real-world example. Remember that nice uh, summer party uh, with your friends uh, last year? Likely they will have sent you an invite first that had a set date and a set time on it and you replied and before actually uh, showing up on the site. Also, they will have prepared the party and ensured that there is enough food and enough beverages and a nice set of music. The same is actually true when you make major changes to inner source projects. Instead of submitting a huge pull request and expecting people to accept it right away, what you will do much more likely is to open an issue and to make a proposal for the changes that you want to make. Sharing your plans early on in that way enables existing trusted committers to provide mentorship early on. There is a law in the Apache Lucene project called Yonix Law of Patches. That one states that a patch with no backwards compatibility, no tests and no documentation at all is better than no patch in Jira. The same is true in InnoSource projects. What you want to do is to share your progress early on and to allow others to follow you and allow others to help you out and avoid dead ends. Right. Does that mean that there is actually no space for face-to-face -face communication in inner source projects? Well, actually no. Teams need a certain amount of face-to-face -face communication and so will you have them in inner source projects. However, once you discuss something verbally, the trusted committer or a trusted committer will likely ask you to put that into the uh, canonical, written, searchable and archived uh, media for that purpose. Once you're clear to participate in an inner source project, we'll be able to actually carry over the same practices that you follow with your own team, and likely only partially. So the same happens in the real world. When you are visiting your friends, you can likely not expect their apartment to work the same way as your place. So the first thing that they will do is to show you around to show where things in their department are. If there are any particularities, they will likely explain it to you. Like if you come to my home, what I will explain to you is that if you go to the kitchen and you turn on the dishwasher and the water kettle at the same time, the fuse will blow in the kitchen. And the same actually happens with inner source projects. They will have doc documents to mostly a uh, readme.md file or similar format and a contributions.md file. And those files will contain helpful information on any deviations from the standard tooling your company might use or anything else that is important to know. Definitely take a look at those documents. They're actually usually very helpful. So looking at these documents, again, means saving yourself a lot of time because you know upfront what to expect. Typically, they'll also help you get started so you don't have to go, go and ask people on a, in a face-to-face -face way for help. Instead, you can follow those instructions step by step. So imagine you have now successfully contributed to a host team for a number of times. You got to know the people, the people trust you actually, and because you contributed very helpful um, changes and you mentored people, and now what might happen is they might actually invite you to become yet another trusted committer. But for now, you are contributing as a contributor. What does that mean? That actually does mean that the decision of if a change goes in or it doesn't go in and how a change is supposed to look 
is in the hands of the trusted committers. Because at the end of the day, they will have to live with it, they will have to support it, and they will have to understand it. So please uh, keep that in mind. Save yourself some time by following the instruction in the documentation. Most likely someone already went through the process of becoming a contributor, and most likely they wrote down what's particular about that process. So typically these documentations are very helpful when, you just, when you're just about to get started contributing to an InnoSource project. They will have documents that contain explanations about everything that deviates from your company's standard uh, setup. And those documents are called contributing.md and readme.md. So in this video section, we explained how to get started and where to find the rules that you're expected to follow. In the next video segment, we will actually dive a little bit deeper into the mechanics of being a contributor. We will show you which particular steps to follow when making your first contribution and how, which technical steps to go through.